Good evening. Welcome once again to a Bible study of the Fourth Baptist Church. Uh, I will be your presenter tonight, uh, Dr. Beeman, and we are delighted uh, to have you to share with us and to study with us on tonight. Welcome, 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 welcome to Fourth Baptist Church Bible Study on this, uh, the first day of February in the year of 2024. We are looking forward to sharing with you. I'm a day ahead of myself. It is January 31st, even if not uh, February the 1st. But welcome, Kim Pender. Welcome, Reverend Peggy Goulet. Welcome, Ivy Bond. Uh, welcome, 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 Roy Coppich. And uh, we're just grateful and thankful unto the Lord for your presence on this evening. Let us go to God with a word of prayer. Connie Baltimore, welcome. Amen. Gracious God, our Father, as we come now, we give you praise, honor, and glory. And we thank you, dear God, for being so gracious, loving, kind, and forgiving unto us that you allowed us to stand together and study together one more time. Bless our time together. Bless us with wisdom and knowledge. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. To God be the glory. Well, my brothers and sisters, I tell you, it's a great day. Uh, to be in the land of the living. It's a great opportunity and a great privilege that God has granted unto us, and we are so thankful unto him. Nan, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us tonight. Valerie Dozier, we praise God for your presence tonight as well. Deacon Mike White, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us tonight as well. Amen. I don't know about you, but... Uh, the Lord is soon to return. Amen. I heard on news this morning uh, that they have planted a chip, some type of chip in somebody's head or brains. And uh, the Bible speaks of such things. And uh, we are truly, truly, truly uh, in the last days. Deborah Grimes, we praise God for your presence tonight as well. And thank you so much uh, for uh, sharing with us on such a great opportunity that God has given to us to study his word. Amen and amen. Let me also say happy birthday. Happy birthday to Van Parker, who is celebrating his birthday on today. Amen. Happy birthday to Deacon Brian McNeil, uh, who is celebrating his birthday. And happy birthday to Alicia Jackson, uh, who is studying, who is uh, sharing and celebrating her birthday today as well. Amen. To God be the glory. Thank you so much. And we praise God from whom all blessings flow. We just thank God for being with us on this evening. Amen. Andrew Roberts, thank you so much for sharing with us. Onita Allen, praise God for your presence. Amen. And I know if you're watching, uh, Jeanette is watching as well. So we thank God for all of you uh, as we go along. Amen. And amen. Tonight, my brothers and sisters, we're going to find ourselves in Acts chapter 23. Nina Dunstan, thank you so much for sharing with us this evening. Acts chapter 23 is where we're going to be, have our focus tonight. And if you would turn with us, we will go through this uh, book together. Juliet Williams, thank you so much for sharing with us. Wayne Shoemaker, praise God for your presence on this evening as well. Amen. So, happy birthday to all that I mentioned just a few minutes ago, and uh, we are grateful and thankful unto God that he has blessed you to have another birthday. Amen. Let's chat. We'll have another Zoom meeting on February the 9th uh, at 7 p.m. Please contact Deaconess Danielle Beeman uh, that she might uh, give you the information of her schedule so that you can join in with that. Our young adult and youth Bible study is every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Please contact Deacon Hazan, uh, I'm sorry, Reverend Hazan Dixon, along with Deaconess Dixon, so that they might share that information with you as well. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we're looking for a glorious time. But on April the 7th, uh, we're going to be favored with a play at Fourth Church. Let the Lord say so. Amen. Deacon Kenny Spruill. Uh, is gathering the information. He's already planned uh, the information 
The only thing we need to do is to do our part, which is practice and to show up. Amen. So if you'd like to participate in the play, please contact uh, Deacon Kenny Spruill uh, so that you can take part in such a glorious event. Sharon Gray, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Listen, Mind Ministry or Mind Dance is uh, taking off at Fourth Baptist Church again, and we want you to know that you can participate. And if you so desire to participate, please contact Shabria Tally uh, and let her know that you want to be one of those individuals that dance along with her. Amen. On Super Bowl Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday, please. Please, please wear your favorite team's jerseys or outfit or whatever you might have. Amen. We want you to represent your team uh, on that Sunday morning of Super Bowl. Is that all right? I know I'm going to come in there with my commander's uniforms and all that, all jerseys and all of that. And we're going to have a glorious time. I, hey, look, all of us are on the bus together. All of us are riding the, 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 the bench together. We're sitting on we're sitting on the same sofa together. Why? Because our teams did not make it. Amen. So be proud of your team. Be proud of who you represent and wear your jersey. Amen. On uh, uh, February uh, the 9th, I believe. Amen. So wear your jersey on Super Bowl Sunday. Is that all right? February Amen. February the what? 11th. February the 11th is Super Bowl. So wear your jersey on that day. Is that all right? To God be the glory. My brothers and sisters, uh, I want you to know uh, that I presented a challenge to so many of you last a couple weeks ago, and you have responded to that challenge in such a monumental uh, way. And we are finally on our way this year to do some great things for the Lord. Amen. As we progress along fastly uh, in uh, this year, a month has gone by already. Amen. But we're ready to do uh, due diligence and to do the task that God has assigned us. To the Day family, thank you so much, Adrian and John and all. Uh, thank you so much for sharing with us. Dolores George, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. Maggie King, thank you so much uh, for being with us once again on this evening. Listen, we are preparing for another year that God has blessed us that we want to be a blessing to others. Community empowerment uh, is well on its way uh, to being realized again this year. So I want you to know that on August the 17th of this year, we will be having community empowerment once again. I want you to make sure that you participate and that you want to be a part of this. Please contact Reverend LeVan West, amen, so that he might share with you the things that are needful and necessary for community empowerment. I am so excited that here we are again. God is blessing us that we might be a blessing to others. Big West, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. Deacon and Smart Hall, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight as well. Amen. Listen, if you have suffered loss and you're going through uh, the, uh, the 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 loss of a loved one or, 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 or loss of uh, a, a, a relationship, whatever it might be. Amen. We have individuals that are designed and prepared to help you. Our grief ministry uh, is alive and well, and you can uh, get a hold of us through our grief ministry by pulling up griefshare.org and uh, present Fourth Baptist Church, Fort Smith, Virginia, and they will promptly direct you to us. Or you can dial directly to the church, 757-393-6657. Amen. And we will respond uh, accordingly. Amen. Tanisha Smith, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. Our prayer team is vigorously, graciously awaiting your re request for prayer. If you want us to pray for you, and we do, we want to pray with you and for you. Here's how you get a hold of us. Dial this number, area code 267-807-9605 with access code 985-155. Amen. And we will respond as soon as you send that message to us. We will respond. Amen. To God be the glory. We want to pray with you. We want to pray for you. How many of you know that prayer changes things? Amen. Prayer. 
works. Amen. I know that does. Theodosia Jones, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us tonight as well. Amen. I don't know whether to call you Teresa or Theodosia, but here's what I'm going to call you. Hey, buddy. All right. To God be the glory. All right. Listen, I want you to continue to pray for your brothers and sisters. I want you to lift up in prayer, Brother Calvin Freeman. Lift up Dolores George. Lift up Herbert Hall. Lift up Mabel Simmons. Uh, lift up William Smith. Michael Jones, Marsha Johnson, Eon Washington, Mary Norman, uh, Joe Randolph, Antoine Jones, Reginald Carey Jr., Jeanette Shoemake, Lucretia White, Louise Bowser, Anita Allen, Reverend and Mrs. Claude Doxy, Amen, Reverend Frieda Thomas, Francie Hastings, Brother Stanford Lucas, thank you and welcome to our Bible study tonight. Goldie McDaniel, Suzette Watson, Sharon Hampton, uh, Melinda Falk, Winfred Booker, Miss Audrey Davis, uh, James Bridgeford, Carol Gore, uh, Ronald Jones, uh, Sonia Claude, Deborah Grimes, Dorothy Spruill, uh, Martha Moss, Carl Mosley, Cheryl Brown, Reverend Florence Pender, Xavier Orton, Beverly Shelton, First Lady Terry Dortch, uh, Charlie Howell Jr., Beatrice Coleman, Joseph Hector Sr., Betty and Richard Smith, Lillian Orton, Glenda Morrison, uh, Patrick Hector, uh, Deborah Thomas, Mary McLeese, Brenda Hardison, Vera Ransom, Louis Spruill, Baby Yara, Juliet Williams, Paula Freeman, and Betty Hayes. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, for your brothers and sisters, that God will intervene in their situation and that God will give them the healing and the deliverance that they so desperately desire as well as need. Amen. Sandra Davis, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us on this evening. Amen. Our Bible study, as we stated a little earlier ago, is going to be found in Acts chapter 23. So let's go there. Acts chapter 23, we find ourselves studying and continuing in the, the life or the journey of the Apostle Paul. From here on out, or from the last week's lesson until the end, we're going to find out that Paul is in the custody of the Romans uh, during this time. Every time we read about him, Paul is finding himself facing one dilemma after another dilemma. Melinda Fox, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. So, Last week, Paul says he wanted to preach uh, to, uh, at, at Jerusalem. He wanted to talk to the Jews that were there. This week, we find that Paul has been uh, retail, has bought, been uh, held hostage, not hostage, but held uh, by the Roman soldiers because uh, there was a riot that broke out and uh, they were about to kill Paul, but the Roman uh, garrison came and rescued him. And now he finds himself standing before the great Sanhedrin court. Amen. Now, the Sanhedrin court was comprised of, of both Pharisees and Sadducees. One group, the Pharisees, believed in the resurrection of the dead, whereas the Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection of the dead. Remember that now, because it's going to play a vital part in our lesson on this evening. Nina Dunstan, thank you so much for sharing with us. So here we go. Acts chapter 23, beginning at verse number 1 and 2. Then Paul, looking earnestly at the council, the Sanhedrin council, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. And the high priest Ananias commanded those who stood by him to strike him on the mouth. Hey, Gloria Laboon, thank you so much for sharing with us. Amen. Now, Paul simply makes a statement. He says, listen, my conscience is clear, okay? And everything I've done, I am satisfied that I have done nothing wrong, and I have lived a life that will be pleasing and acceptable unto God. So he says, my conscience is clear. There's nothing there uh, that would incriminate me if I was found uh, in a court. Amen. Paul said, I would be uh, let go 
because I would find they I would find that they have acquitted me. The high priest at the time, Ananias, told those who were standing close to Paul to hit him. Hit him in the mouth. <coughs> Spite him. <coughs> Excuse me. Spite him in the mouth. And why did the high priest do this? Well, the high priest could not speak with a clear conscience because he was a thief. And he was skimming and, and money uh, off the top for those uh, Jews and Romans that he collected money for. Amen. So he's commanded that Paul be struck, stricken on the mouth. And this was a symbol of, of, of uh, him declaring that no one has a clear conscience. And, man, and here's what he's saying to Paul. With all this stuff that's going on today, with all this rioting and these people wanting to kill you, you definitely do not have a clear conscience. Something you have done. So why stand you there and proclaim that you have a clear conscience? Well, from a worldly viewpoint, uh, the, the high priest was only looking at it from the natural. But Paul was looking at it not only from the natural, but also from the spiritual. Amen. Paul was looking at it from this way. I've done my best to represent God. I've done all that I could to testify of him, to teach concerning him, to preach the gospel. I've treated everybody that I the best that I could and the fairness that I could. I, I've done everything. My, my, my conscience is clear. Can I tell you, my brothers and sisters, amen, it, it's a wonderful thing to have a clear conscience. But the problem is that so many people today do not have a clear conscience because they have succumbed to the wiles of the world. Uh, they have found themselves at one way or another doing something that is not pleasing unto the Lord. But Paul says, that's not me. Paul says, I have done absolutely everything possible that I can think of to be found uh, in, a, in a pleasing way before God. Amen. He simply says, I got a clear conscience. All right. Now, the high priest, as I said before, could not say that. Uh, Dr. Patrick Emmanuel, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. Amen. And the reason that he uh, could not say that with, a, uh, with affirmity is because everybody knew that he was a cheat. Everybody knew uh, that he was doing something wrong. Everyone knew that he was a, a thief. Amen. He was taking money off the top for himself. The only person he was worried about and concerned about was himself. Amen. And that's perhaps one of the reasons why he directed those who were standing near Paul to strike him. Amen. To God be the... Listen, Paul says, my, my mind is clear. But this guy sitting there saying, what, what are you talking about? Everybody knows everybody cheats. Amen. But internally of his own mind and his own thinking... He was thinking about how terrible he is and how conniving he is. Amen. He was just one of those individuals that thought that what he was doing was pleasing and acceptable. It's, here's what it is. How in the world can you continually to do wrong and talk about people, backbite people, tear people down, live a life that is not pleasing unto God and expect God to say that he's pleased with you. Amen. You see, you cannot walk with God while you're still holding hands with the devil. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. that's a nice one there. You, you, you can't. You cannot walk with God while you're still holding hands with the devil. And this was Ananias' problem. He was trying to dress himself up to be that individual uh, that everybody thought was pristine. There's nothing wrong with him. Look how he dresses. Look how he walks. Look how he talks. Look, look how he conducts himself. But deep down inside, Ananias knew that he was not right with God. Amen. We have people like that in our society today. They do all the right things outwardly, but their heart never, never knew the Lord. Amen, somebody. So that is what happened when we started this text. Now, Paul responded to the 
uh, at, to the high priest directing someone, hitting him. And uh, Paul responded and said unto him, let's look at verse 3 through 5. Then Paul said to him, God will strike you, talking about the high priest, you whitewashed wall. For you set uh, to judge me according to the law, and do you command me to be struck contrary to the law? Paul is saying the very law that you say that I'm breaking, you're breaking every day, more than, I, more than anything else. He says, so how can you uh, uh, tell them to, to strike me when you're doing everything wrong? It sort of reminds me of our political situation today. Amen. Everybody's talking about uh, how uh, uh, the law ought to be uh, the final word or uh, the judge and all of that. But yet there are those in our society that believe that the law does not apply to them. Amen. So they're talking about all the evil that others have done, but they've never put that mirror in front of them themselves and looked at the evil that they have done. Amen. I'm going to move on from that. So you know, you know the gist of what I'm trying to say. All right. So Paul simply says to those who stood by, do you revile God's uh, 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 high priest? That's what they asked Paul. Do you not respect God's high priest is what they're saying. You know, Paul said unto them, I did not know he was a high priest. Now, Paul had been away from Jerusalem and, and, and all for over 20 years. So he probably lost contact with who the reigning uh, 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 personalities were at that time. So he responds as to say, whoops, I didn't know he was a high priest. Okay. So my, uh, my brother, that he was uh, for, it is written, you shall not speak evil of a ruler of your people. So Paul reverts back to the law now and said, hey, here again, I know the law just as well as y'all know the law, or even more so. Amen. So I don't know what tone Paul spoke in. I don't know whether Paul hollered at him. I don't know whether Paul spoke in a soft uh, uh, voice or not. I, I don't know whether he was aggressive in his speech. I don't know, but it does not matter. Amen. It does not matter what the tone or whatever his voice was. What the point is this. When you are going to defend yourself and sometimes we need to think before we speak and before we act. Amen. And the fashion in which you act or respond can determine the outcome of a situation. Barbara Rome, thank you so much for sharing with us. Susie Austin, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us tonight. I pray that school is going well. All right. So Paul now tells the high priest, and we're in uh, Acts chapter 23. Acts chapter 23 is where we are today. Okay. So he says there before them, and the men of the council were supposed to be an example for everybody else in the law of Moses. But they were, they were nowhere near being an example. You know, I, I, uh, I, I, I was uh, in a store the other day, and uh, we were talking about uh, how uh, uh, they were talking to me. This, this uh, 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 clerk was talking to me about uh, how preachers don't have anything to do except preach on Sunday, okay? And then sometimes they can't even preach then, you know. And I, I, I could not sit there without opening my mouth. I said, well, there's much more to it than that. You know, and right away she understood then that I, the way that I responded, that I must be a preacher, okay? So my point to her was, oftentimes we think little of the person and little of the position, amen? It's not how well you hoop. It's not how well you can run around the church and sweat and all of that. It's what is your message, amen? Simple as that. You see, you can do all of those things and don't have a message at all. Don't have a point at all. What are you driving at? What are you trying to tell folk about the Lord? Or are you just up there performing? Amen, somebody. To God, let me move on from that too. All right. So Paul simply said, I know the law better than you know the law. And, and, and I'm willing to live within the law, but I want you to know that Jesus Christ is better than the law. Betty Smith, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. 
So let's go to verse 3 through 5, and we find out, oh, we just did that, uh, that Paul was stricken by those that were around him. So let's go to verse number 6. So now Paul tries to preach to them about the gospel. He tried twice to tell them about Jesus Christ. And Paul found out that there are a lot of people that don't want to hear about Jesus. Uh-oh. How many of you know that everybody needs to know about Jesus? Everybody needs to hear about Jesus. But these people were so riled up in their effort to kill Paul that they did not hear the message of Paul. Amen. They did not listen to what he had to say. Amen. And sometimes, my brothers and sisters, things get out of hand. Amen. It's easy to get out of hand in church. Easy to get out of hand in the community, wherever you might be. Things can get out of hand, so much so that regardless of what you say, they just don't, just don't hear you or they're just not listening. Amen. To God be the glory. Uh, Trinice Hector, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us tonight. Amen. So, my brothers and sisters, sometimes people can have one thought <clears throat> and one thought only, and that is to destroy or kill the messenger. Amen. Or to avenge themselves in some form or fashion. But what Paul is simply saying here is this. He told them twice about Jesus Christ. They would not listen. And then all of a sudden, Paul had a, a genius idea. Paul thought about something. He said, wait a minute. I once was part of the Sanhedrin court, and Paul was. He said, I was part of the Sanhedrin court. And I know that half of the Sanhedrin do not believe in the resurrection of the Lord or the dead. And the other half does. The Pharisees believed in the resurrection. The Sadducees did not. So what did Paul do? In his clever thinking and his clever maneuver, Paul did this in verse number 6. When Paul perceived that one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Men and brethren, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee, Concerning the hope and resurrection of the dead, I am being judged. Now, what did that do? On the surface, it didn't do a whole lot. But according to the belief, it did a tremendous job for Paul. Paul split the cancel right down the middle. And he divided the cancel. The Pharisees on one side, the Sadducees on the other side, and Paul says, being that I believe in the resurrection, I'm going to side with the Pharisees, which he was a Pharisee himself. <clears throat> okay, And Paul knew that this would create a division and contention within the Sanhedrin council. Amen, somebody. God showed Paul how to overcome and how to steal and how to quiet the, the crowd. To get them focused not on Paul and killing Paul, but get them focused on the resurrection. Amen. They got quiet, y'all. So quiet that they began to look at each other and said, hey, Paul's telling the truth. Now, there is resurrection from the dead. The other side said, hey, you don't know what you're talking about. So Paul divided them. How many of you heard it? Divide and conquer. And this is a ploy that the world uses, that the devil uses all the time. Amen. If he cannot get you to touch and agree on the truth, then the devil will do that to us. The devil will, will, will present himself or present a situation or present an argument to divide us because he knows that half of us believe this and half of us believe that. So our brothers and sisters, whenever we come to a, a, a point, where we have to step up <clears throat> and face reality and tell the truth. Amen. This is what Paul did. He stepped up, he told the truth concerning the resurrection, and he divided the group. This was genius thinking on his part. Amen. <clears throat> he didn't do anything wrong. He didn't say anything wrong. 
He did not deny the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. He did not do any of that. He simply said, I know what to do. I'm going to make a true statement and then let them deal with it. Amen. It's sort of like throwing uh, oil uh, on a fire and then letting other people try to put it out. Amen. What does it do? It takes the attention off of Paul and put the attention on uh, themselves as their differences as well as the truth uh, concerning the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Can you imagine Paul now, after he made that statement, Paul steps back, relaxes himself, and watch the fight take place. Amen. The devil does that to us in the wrong way. He divides and conquers within the church, within our political arena, wherever it might be. The devil just sits back and smiles because he sees the confusion and he sees the division that is among us. And whenever you got division and confusion going on, you never focus on the right thing. You never focus on reality and you never focus on the truth. That's what he does. Amen. The devil does that to us. And you don't have to say, sit there quiet as, as if he does it. He does it to our families. He does that to our friends, on our job, wherever it might be. The devil sits back and laughs at us because we bite every time. We, 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 we grab a hold of it every time thinking uh, that, that, that we're going to come out on top. Amen. To God be the glory. So here it is. Paul read the audience perfectly well. And my brothers and sisters, I tell people all the time, especially young preachers, Know your audience. Know who you are preaching to. Amen. Just don't get up there and open up with a song. Don't just get up there and open up with a chant or a dance or whatever. But you need to do your due diligence and survey the audience. See who's sitting before you. Amen. And God will allow you to be able to use that insight in order to be more effective for him. Amen, somebody. To God be the Lord. Listen, here's what I do. When I get up on Sunday morning and stand before the folk, I've already taken a look at the congregation, those who are present. Amen. I know the hallelujah ones. I know the ones that are just there for to be seen. I know those who are not going to respond at all. I know those who are not going to smile whatsoever. Amen. I know them, but I also know the ones that's going to smile, the ones that are going to say amen. So I fix my eyes on the ones that have a smile on their face. It's difficult to preach to folk with angry looking faces. Amen. And if that doesn't work, I find a spot on the wall somewhere that I can preach to the wall. Amen. And here's what happens. When you preach to the wall, it bounces off the wall and to the ears of those who are sitting there. Deaconess Jennifer Goodman Hayes, thank you for sharing with us on this evening. Amen, somebody. So, the Bible tells us, do not be afraid of their faces, but preach anyway. Amen. Whether they like it or don't like it, you got to preach. Amen. Whether they're with you or not with you, you got to preach. Whether they are receiving it or not receiving it, you got to preach. Because if God gave you the message... If God gave you a word, that word will not come back to him void. Amen. That word is going to resonate with somebody. It may be one, two, or three people. That word is going to resonate with them. Amen. Because that was God's intent for it to resonate with them. So don't, 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 don't worry about, well, who am I preaching to today? Don't worry about that. Just preach. Amen. I'm going to leave, leave that alone. I get, it. I get in trouble with that. Amen. To God be the glory. So here it is. Paul has divided the council now. And we're on verse 7 and nine, through 9. And when he has said this, a dissension arose between the Pharisees and the Sadducees. I see, Paul was smart. Uh, and the assembly was divided. Yes, it was. Amen. And therefore, Sadducees say that there is no resurrection and no angel, nor spirit. But the Pharisees confess both. 
they their beliefs were totally different. Amen. Then there arose a loud outcry, and the scribes of the Pharisees' party arose and protested, saying this, We find no evil in this man. Why? Because he thinks like us. He, he understands like us. He knows the truth like us. Amen. Uh, the, the, we find no evil in this man, but if a spirit or an angel has spoken to him, let us not fight against God. Ah, my Lord, have mercy. How many of you know that many times preachers, people in church, deacons, deaconess, uh, trustees, uh, 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 whoever uh, may come and say, hey, listen, we're in the same boat together. So why are we arguing one with the other? Well, because eventually, if we don't do something about it, we both going to drown on this boat. So if the boat's got a hole in it, we've got to work together to secure the hole or keep bailing water out of the boat until we get to shore. But if we argue about who put the hole there and how the hole got there, we're going to drown before we get to shore. And generally, this is what happens in churches or meetings or whatever, everywhere. Amen. We get to arguing about things that don't matter. Yes, the boat has a hole in it. I'm not concerned at this point who put the hole there. My concern is to fix the hole so I can reach the shore. Amen. But there are some people that will stand there and argue. I saw this and I saw that. You put it there. They did this. And, 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 and the boat is constantly sinking. But if we get on one accord, and work on the critical things and understand the critical issues that's, that are set before us, we both can make it to the shore safely. And when we get to the shore, well, perhaps we may argue, or perhaps we may uh, contend with each other about how the whole got there. But my point is this, at least we got to the shore safely, rather than drowning while arguing. Amen. That sounds pretty good to me. Drowning while arguing. That's what happens in churches everywhere. People will drown before they will confess that, hey, we need to work together. Isn't that what our political system is like today? Amen. The, 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 the Republicans don't have a message, don't have a plan, uh, don't, don't have anything but an argument. Every time you turn around, they're arguing about something. But if we all get on one accord, amen. Brenda White, thank you so much for sharing with us. I know who you are. Thank you so much for being with us on tonight. Amen. <clears throat> there is a bill in place that needs to be uh, voted on by Congress and the Senate uh, to fix the border. But they don't want to do that because it's a political year. It's an election year. So why give the opponent the tools and the equipment to say, I fixed it? You see, that, that's my issue. <clears throat> They keep talking about want to fix it, but they don't agree and vote to fix it. Something wrong with that. Monica Dewberry says this. They get stuck in the weeds and lose sight of the big picture. That's exactly what happens everywhere you turn around. Everywhere you turn around, everybody's looking at a smaller picture than the reality of what God wants us to be doing. Amen. Thank you, Anita Allen, who says... Uh, they're right on point. Amen. Right on point. People are like that in our society today. <clears throat> Excuse me for a minute. All right. So he divides the council. And as he divides the council, Paul sees this golden opportunity where he can take the thrust of their anger away from him and he places it, uh, places it in the middle, which causes a contention between the two. Amen. So, Paul simply says, hey, listen, we ought not fight against God. Amen. So, if Paul is true, and if Paul says that there is a resurrection, and if Paul says uh, that he has lived a life of good conscience, then we ought to, and this is the Pharisees uh, talking, we ought to roll with that. Let's take that for face value and let's roll with it and see what we can come and what God will make of it. Amen. To God be the glory. I don't know about you, 
But have you ever, ever met some folks that all they want to do is argue about something? All they want to do is to be negative about every little thing? You know, what, what does it matter? Whether the print on the paper is blue or black. Amen. What, what, what does it matter? Whether the color of the wall that was painted is, is, is white or brown. What, what, what does it matter? Amen. We major in the minor things. Amen. And we uh, 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 minor in the major things. We need to make sure that what we are uh, living for, what we are doing for the Lord are the major things for God. <laughs> Amen. Deacon Kenneth Spruill, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. Amen. And Monica Dewberry, you're absolutely right. People like that have a rebellious spirit. Amen. They talk about being faithful unto God. They talk about walking with God, serving God, loving the Lord. But listen, let me tell you something. You cannot love God and hate people. Amen. Simple as that. You cannot say that I'm on the Lord's side and I'm faithful and, and diligent in my service to the Lord, but yet you turn your back on people. Amen. You slice them up. You dice them up. You do all those things. Amen. But yet I'm still on the Lord's side. I saw a truck earlier today <clears throat> on his bumper sticker. They had some words up there about individuals that don't like certain other individuals. And I said to myself, how ironic that is. Here you are spewing anger, racism, and everything else, but yet you've got a, got, a, got a picture of a cross on your truck. Amen. you got a picture of some other things on your truck that are not conducive to being a Christian or living like a Christian. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. You cannot... <clears throat> Say that you're going to heaven at the dismay of treating people unfairly and unjustly. I know I'm right about that. So the Pharisees and the Sadducees were bitter enemies. And Paul capitalized off of that fact. Let's look at verse number 10. Acts 23, verse number 10. And when Paul did this, they saw the contention between the two. And they took the, the focus off of Paul and put it on themselves. So that the Roman uh, commander said, wait a minute, I better get this guy out of here. Speaking of Paul, I better come to his rescue before they turn that anger back on him. All right. Now, when there arose a great dissension, the commander, fearing lest Paul might be pulled to pieces by them, uh, commanded the soldiers to go down and take him by force from among them. And bring him into the barracks. So here again, God rescued Paul. And why did God rescue Paul? Because we're going to find out later in this lesson that God says, I'm not through with you yet, Paul. I'm going to send you to Rome. And you will speak the word. You will teach the word. You will preach the word in Rome. Amen. So Paul, don't worry about it. I'm getting ahead of myself in this lesson. They rescued him. Now verse 11 says uh, that, that by the following night, when, uh, uh, the Lord stood by Paul and said, Be of good cheer, for as you have testified of me in Jerusalem, so you must also testify of me in Rome. So here it is. The Bible says that the Lord stood by Paul. And the Lord says, Be of good cheer. Now, when I hear that, the Lord says, Be of good cheer, that tells me that Paul may have been concerned with his life. Paul was concerned that it was all over. Paul was concerned about his future. But the Lord knows our hearts. The Lord knows what things bother us, trouble us, whatever. Amen. So the Lord sent an angel down that night. Now, many commentaries that I've read, often uh, they refer to this angel as none other than Jesus Christ himself. Amen. Said so he came down, spoke to Paul, and said, Paul, don't worry. I'm, I'm just paraphrasing it in my own way. Paul, don't worry. Be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Be happy. Amen. I'm going to stand by you. I'm going to be with you. Amen. Just as you testify for me in, Rome, in Jerusalem, I'm going to send you to Rome. So, Paul, don't worry. Here's what my thought is. What the Lord was saying to Paul right then 
He says, be confident, be comfortable, relax. Amen. I got this. Can I share with somebody tonight that perhaps the Lord is saying to you, relax, be comfortable. I got this. I got you. I am with you because I promise in my word that I will never leave nor forsake you. And being that the Lord has already declared that he will always be with us, that, that means that he will be our provider as well. He will be our protector as well. He will be the only source that we need for everything that we need. Amen. So he comforted Paul in that. While Paul was sleeping, the, the Lord sent uh, his presence before Paul and declared unto Paul, I'm with you. Amen. If I can paraphrase it that way. And I want to share with you tonight that perhaps you're struggling going through something. Perhaps you're dealing with this or that. Perhaps the Lord is saying to you tonight, relax. Be of good cheer. I got you. I got this. I'm going to work this out for you. Amen. And when God works it out, God is going to work it out out completely. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so God told Paul, don't worry about it, Paul. I know you're uh, concerned with your future. I know you're concerned with what's going to happen. But Paul, I got you. Amen, somebody. Paul, I got you. And the Lord says that he stood by Paul that night. Can I let you know that the Lord will stand by you? Amen. And whatsoever dilemma you may find yourself, the Lord is with you. Amen. He's standing right there with you. Now, I did not say <clears throat> that he would deliver you uh, from your issues, from your trouble, your trials, and your tribulations. But sometimes he will allow us to suffer in them while still saying to us, relax. I got this. I got you. He increases our faith. He increases our trust and our dependence upon him as we watch him bring us through it and bring us out of it. Amen. How many of you know that you are stronger today because you went through something and you witnessed the powerful move of God in your life as he brought you out of it? Amen. That strengthened your trust. That strengthened your faith. That strengthened your confidence in God that God has total control over every issue that you might confront in life. I know I'm right about that. Amen. Many of you watching me today can be a witness for the Lord, how the Lord has stood by you when you were suffering with sickness, when you were dealing with hurt, when you were uh, 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 dealing with disappointment, when, when you had to face false friends, amen, when folk just did not want to be near you and around you, folk were leaving you. But listen, let me tell you something. <clears throat> Don't worry about folk leaving you. Don't worry about them walking out of your life. Can I suggest to you that perhaps, you know, they're not leaving on their own. Let's turn this thing around. Perhaps it is God pushing them out of your life. Amen. Perhaps God is saying, you don't need them. You don't need to have these fair weather friends that the only time you hear from them or see them is when they want something from you. <laughs> Maybe God is simply saying to you, in order for you to grow spiritually in your faith in every aspect of your life, perhaps God is saying is, I've got to get rid of that which is holding you back. And they are the ones that are holding you back. Ah, Onita Allen says, God help me make it. Just keep your eyes on God. Amen. God will help you make it. And let's see How many of you know that God will make a way out of no way? That's an old saying that old folks uh, used to say. Amen. But it is the truth. God will that will separate your issues and, and those things that you are facing in your life, just like he divided the Red Sea for the children of Israel. 
Amen. Amen. Wayne, I hear what you're saying. Reason, season, or lifetime. People, which one are you looking for? That's a good question that each and one, each one of us have to answer for ourselves. Amen. To God be the glory. So my brothers and sisters, I want you to know that God is not here to injure you. God is here to provide and protect you. And God will build a hedge of, of protection around you so that the devil can't get to you. Amen. In his full desire to, to, to test you. Amen. God's keeping him at bay. Amen. So don't become dismayed when things seem to be it's you and you alone. Sometimes that's the best way to be. It's just me and God alone. And how many of you know one with God is a majority? Amen. Just you and God can defeat whatever enemy that will ever come in your life. Amen. How many of you know that God never left the battle? Amen, somebody. So, look at it that way. Just as Paul stood up boldly and spoke for the Lord, and the angel of the Lord told Paul, don't worry, I'm with you, I got you. Go ahead on to sleep. Amen. So, my brothers and sisters, here's what I do. I say, I say this all the time at Fourth Baptist. If God is going to be up watching over me and handling my situation, then I'm going to get the best night's sleep that I possibly can. I'm going to go to sleep, not worry about it, turn it over to the Lord, get me some sleep, get up in the morning, and the situation still may be there, but I know God is working it out. Otherwise, he would not have told me. Am I right about it? Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. I like that, Anita, but I stay under the cover of God. Amen. But I stay with the Lord. And the Lord has his hands. The Lord is above you. The Lord is beneath you. The Lord is in front of you and behind you. God's got you covered. Amen. And the only thing you've got to do is walk in your promise. Walk in your faith and live it out. Amen. And see what God won't do. Turn it over to the Lord. And he will work it out. Amen. That's another old song. That's a beautiful song. I turned it over to the Lord and he worked it out. Come on, Juliet. I hear you. Amen. Monica Newberry says, I cannot tell you how many times the answer came to me in a dream. I can't sleep when I am up worrying. Ah, that's a good thought there. To God be the glory. Amen. And amen. Our brothers and sisters, we're going to stop right there. And we're going to pick this up again next week. And we're more than likely going to finish up chapter 23 and go right into chapter 24, if time permits. Amen? To God be the glory. Listen, I really enjoyed this lesson. Amen. I've enjoyed how the Lord spoke to Paul and how the Lord used Paul and how the Lord showed Paul how to conquer and divide, how to get himself uh, out of trouble and how the Lord turned the issue from Paul to uh, political issues. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, God will do the same for you. Amen. Juliet says God can and will work it out. I know he will. To God be the glory. So listen, if this Bible study has been a blessing to you, perhaps you may desire to be a blessing to us. Be a blessing unto the Lord. And you can do that by uh, pulling up the app called Givelify, and when you pull up Givelify, search for Fourth Baptist Church, 726 South Street, Portsmouth, Virginia, 23704. Tap on that, and you will find a picture of, of the illustrious pastor and the church service before you. Click on that uh, again, enter in the amount that you want to be a blessing to the Lord. Amen. Through your tithes, your offering, or your sacrifices, however you might want to do that. Amen. Click on that again, and you have been a blessing to Fourth Baptist Church, as well as the ministry that God has given us at Fourth Baptist. If that does not work for you, you can sit down and write a check. Amen. And make that check out to Fourth Baptist Church, 726 South Street, Portsmouth, Virginia, 23704. Slip it in the mail. 
We will gladly receive it. We will graciously uh, receive it. We will give God praise, honor, and thanks unto you as well as unto him for your generous gift. Amen. Or you can bring your finances by the church and one of our staff members will gladly receive it. However you want to be a blessing, you ought to do so to the goodness and the power of God. Amen. To God be the glory. Well, my brothers and sisters, that's we're just about out of time. But listen, I want you to make sure that you understand something that was in our lesson tonight. You are never alone. Amen. Paul may have thought he was alone in that prison cell, but as he slept that night, the Lord came by and assured him that he is never, ever alone. And I want to say that to you tonight. You are never alone. God is always with you. Amen. To God be the glory. Just think about it. Everywhere you go, God is right there. Every thought you have, God is right there. Every move you make, God is right there. Amen. You are never alone. When trials and tribulations come up, and they will come up, when situations come up that you think that you cannot handle, don't worry about it. Turn it over to the Lord. He's right there. Just turn around and say, hey, God, you got this. Amen. I'm giving this to you, Lord, to work it out in your own way. Amen. Tell me, my brothers and sisters, I've been there. I've had to struggle with this myself. Amen. And somebody may have said, well, you never look like you're alone. You never, you are. You are, everything seems to be going well for you. You're always happy. You're always excited. Listen, there are moments in my life that I can testify to that sometimes I'm asking God, God, what in the world is going on? You know, why do I have to go through this? Amen. And God reminds me, I'm with you. You're not alone. We're going to work this out. Amen. And my brothers and sisters, time after time, I've seen God stand true to his word. And I want to share with you that if you turn it over to him faithfully, if you commit it unto him faithfully, if you just give it to him faithfully and don't try to take it back for yourself, See what God will do. He'll work it out for you. Trust me on that. Amen. As I heard the other day on a movie, you can take that to the bank. Amen. Well, my brothers and sisters, we're out of time. And I want you to know that I'm looking forward to this Sunday morning as we shall gather together at Fourth Baptist Church. And we're going to give God the praise, the honor, and the glory we're going to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. And we're going to let the world know, amen, that we're on the Lord's side. But most importantly, the Lord is on our side as well. Amen. To God be the glory. Let us pray. Almighty, eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear God, for the message that went out tonight. We thank you for the understanding but we thank you for the reassurance that you are always with us and that we are never alone. So, Father God, whoever it might be that is going through tonight, I pray, Father God, that you, you, you would remind them and encourage them that you are yet with them and that you are going to work it out for them. Bless your people tonight, dear God. Bless the sick that are going through those who are in hospitals, those who are at home, those, dear God, who are laboring under the bondage of sickness. Heal them now, dear God. Deliver them now in the name of Jesus. We present them before you, dear God, and we know that whatever your will and your purpose might be, it will be accomplished. So we give you praise, honor, and glory right now in the name of Jesus for the victory that shall be realized. Bless your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. My brothers and sisters, I have enjoyed my time with you. Amen. I'm excited tonight over this message, over this word that God has given unto us. I am excited because I know that somebody out there 
got a message. Amen. That you are never alone and that God is always right there with you. Turn it over to the Lord and he will work it out. Good night, my friends. Good night, my brothers and my sisters. Love you all. Oh, by the way, and there's nothing you can do about it. Good night, my brothers and sisters.